So welcome to the Ministry of Public Administration and Communications Project Review Board Sensitization Session. Um, this, the intent of this session is to orient individuals into the utilization of the project proposals as they have been submitted for endorsement by the Project Review Board for onward approval by the Permanent Secretary. The agenda will go through the background um, to provide a context. The three areas of focus is the responsibility of the stakeholders, the responsibility of the Project Review Board. I'll explain a couple of key documents and then we'll do a review and we'll stop right there. So let's look at the background. So it needs to be addressed. So there's ministerial responsibilities of the Ministry of Public Administration and Communications. So we have a, a, a remit there uh, that states exactly what we're supposed to be doing as a ministry. Now, we don't build bridges, um, man police stations, but there are things that we do in terms of public sector transformation. And so looking at the, our gazetted responsibilities and the strategic plan, which at the time of this video, uh, the plan was planned to be published a month away in, in April 2017. Those two are key documents that would feed into the proposals. And so that when the board is reviewing those proposal documents, they take that into consideration. Other documentation can be the 2013 vision, vision 2030. Uh, as well as the government um, compliance. So the Ministry of Finance called Circular March 2016. Now at the time of this publication of this video, there was a recent publication, I think in February 19th, but similar content. The publication so states, and I want to go to Appendix A, make a reference there, and I draw your attention to what is in red, it says that the based on project ideas emanating from various sources, ministry departments and agencies are required as a requirement to screen project ideas and select the most suitable ones for more detailed development. So it's a responsibility of ministries and departments, agencies to screen projects, ideas, that is to prioritize, identify what can work, what is the area of focus. So the instruction given by the ministry of finance and to all ministries including public admin and communication is that we need to have a mechanism in place to screen project ideas to review them to help ensure that we select the most suitable ones so the project review board has been set up as such a mechanism to aid in screening these project ideas as per the call circular there are Fiscal constraint, uh, this video was published in 2017, um, for which at that time the ministry was allocated 46.5 million um, for the PSIP, which includes consolidated fund based projects and IDF sourced. The fact here is that limited funding implies that there must be again mechanism to choose the most suitable projects to thus ensure to increase the probability of project success. Another factor is there are at times unutilized releases and what you don't want happening for any ministry is the returning of PSIP funds, right, back to the treasury, back to the coffers. Um, low achievement of planned project objectives also uh, is a challenge and I think it's a challenge because sometimes the proposals themselves may not be well defined, they may be unrealistic or they may, be, they may need additional support or more resources to help improve project success that provides some of the needs that we are seeking to address the area of governance uh yes i i borrowed a definition from it governance so governance specifying here project governance is specified the decision rights and that's the operative uh, phrase for me decision rights right and accountability framework to encourage desirable behavior so it's a matter of who making decision what decisions can be made how those decisions are made so there are three uh, questions to me that all governance especially in this context project governance seek to address one what decisions must be made to ensure effective management of projects that decision might be in terms of what projects go through what projects do we suspend what projects do we provide additional resources to what projects do we cannibalize what projects do we terminate 
what projects do we send forth so what decisions must be made to ensure effective management of projects next who should make these decisions right which authority within the organization should make the decisions concerning projects and thirdly how will these decisions be made and monitor because you want to ensure the degree of consistency you want to imply that for one set of projects from a di division there's a particular way in which you make a decision that may appear favoritism um, or it is discrimination so you want to ensure that there is some consistency right, and transparency with regard to this, the decision that are actually made and how such are monitored with regard to governance factors, there are several factors that influence the decisions with regard to projects. So we have, in instance, up here, um, the Public Procurement Act. So the Public Procurement Act uh, to be proclaimed at the end of 2017, March, um, has a, a contributing factor with regard to how projects and other procurement factors are actually taken into consideration. Then we have the call circular, as I mentioned before. So the call circular, um, a recent published in 2017, 19th, I think, of February, um, that would give direction to how decisions are made. Then we have project policies. So within an, any ministry, we may have policies and guidelines that would influence that. Steering committees, such as the Project Review Board, or other steering committees could be set up. Interministerial steering committees could be set up. Again, that can make decisions. And then you have the project management office, different models. You have a model that can say it acts as a consultative role. The project management office can act as a role for compliance. It can act as a role for directing. So these are all, these all governance factors actually can contribute um, towards how decisions are made with regard to projects going forward. The Permanent Secretary within the Ministry in January or February would have approved a project governance framework for to operate within the Ministry. Um, here we will see that at the top level is corporate governance. So within the executive management, that is Minister, Permanent Secretary and Deputy PS, they share that area for helping providing corporate governance, right? decisions made at the top level of the organization. At the next level is where the project governance starts. But it starts at a portfolio level, i.e., it starts where we look at the full suite of projects within the ministry and making recommendations based upon all projects, not necessarily any specific project. Um, so within here, we have um, persons who are involved. So these are the, this is the project review board composition, where you have persons from legal, finance, strategic services, corporate services, uh, program management division having a dual role of being on the board and providing secretariat support and the chair of the project review board being the deputy permanent secretary but we'll get more into that a little later, later on in this presentation so the senior management addresses portfolio at the next level where you have the specific projects it is recommended that every project that there is a steering committee that will comprise of the project owner so the project owner would be the in this in most instances the director of a, a division or the head of an agency a team lead or a technical resource right a subject matter expert so if it's a hr an hr specialist if it's an it it specialist and a project coordinator or project implementation officer from the program management division at times due to lack of resources the technical officer may have to double up as a technical resource and project resource but a steering committee set up at this level is in governance at this second level within projects. This presentation will focus on governance at this level here, the senior management level. And this is the area of focus. And it's just a note that it is influenced by the corporate governance coming down and it will influence what occurs at the last rung at the, at the governance model. So let's look at the responsibility of stakeholders. So this workflow shows a swim lane, and here we could um, see that we have there's a beneficiary unit. Beneficiary here refers to the division that the project is operating in and supposed to provide those re, um, resources for. Um, also, we look at there's the, the secretariat, right? So we have the secretariat, 
also the project review board secretariat um then there is the project review board itself permanent secretary so the flow starts like this um the start you create a project proposal so the beneficiary has that responsibility a lot of organization people think or believe that the responsibility of creating a proposal rests with the project office now it, it depends sometimes there are times in which um, if the project resource is totally dedicated to a particular project that person me but the responsibility division wise it is the beneficiary unit has the responsibility to create the proposal the document is created it is then sent to the in this instance to the secretariat which is represented by the project man program management division the division would review ensure for compliance all i's are dotted and t's are crossed it will then see is the proposal acceptable to go through for the board to review if yes it is registered and it goes to the board if no it is then uh, returned to the beneficiary for them to make necessary amendment so the the secretariat will then forward that document to the project review board the board will then review it will assign a score um, if it is that there's not a passing score it returns to the secretariat who in turn will inform the beneficiary if the score is if it is a passing score and is endorsed it is then sent to the permanent secretary for approval it is to note that from this workflow it is seen that approval only rest with the permanent secretary or the accounting officer the project review board doesn't have that authority to approve projects it can endorse or not endorse all right um, one element here that is missing in the workflow that needs to be updated is that the uh, recourse can be taken that is the, the beneficiary division if a project is not endorsed um, a request can be made to the permanent secretary to ask for a second review right so that is quite okay and normal to actually occur the number of stakeholders you are seeing here at least four so we have four more can be involved this there are four actual distinct bodies um, we identified what the responsibilities are and we said very critically to note that the approval only takes place by the office of or the person in the permanent secretary or accounting officer let's look at the responsibility of the project review board in some detail so i'll do an overview here and then i will we will review um, the document in to some some detail and what you need to have before you uh, with this section is a copy of the terms of reference and it's important to have a copy while you're reviewing this this video um, presentation as well as a copy of the proposal template so proposal template at least proposal template and terms of reference for this part of the presentation so we are looking here at i'll cover the, the background the background context um, deals with making reference to the call circular um, the the focus of the objective being that of uh, prioritizing projects we will look at some of the outcomes such as increased psip spend um, increased project success i.e more projects completing their, their, their objectives we'll look go more into the responsibility of the project review board as well as the secretariat that is the the program management division we'll review the level of authority we said before that the board cannot approve pro project proposal they endorse the approval rests with the permanent secretary or accounting officer um, the composition of the board itself so we'll, we mentioned before when you look at the the, the framework we use the governance framework you saw the deputy permanent secretary um, being the chair the vice chair being the director of strategic services and going down at the membership and we'll talk a little detail about the secretariat all right so i'm going to move now to an area where i'm going to pull up segments of the terms of reference and that would be used i hope you have your copy so that you'll be able to follow so the background area um i again i call your attention to um let me go back all right so i call your attention here to the uh, ministry of finance called circular um you would recall this part here and this is a more or less a course or a quote if that may have been i may have paraphrased that is so the ministry must screen project ideas p 
prepare project documents for those uh, for funding. Um, the, the ministry provided, that is the Ministry of Finance and the call circular provided a mechanism to pri even to prioritize projects. So the project review board is actually seeking to ensure that as a ministry we are compliant with the call circular. So this is this project review board mechanism is one of compliance, right? In, to, that ensures that there is value for money to ensure that we screen the best project ideas or concept that would be able to provide best service for our uh, stakeholders. So the objective is to review and prioritize the initiatives. So that's the operative term there to um, review and to prioritize initiatives, whether new or in train. It can be a new project or a project that is in train. Right? So even with an existing project, we can the, the board can be asked to review, comment, and make certain suggestions on. Uh, by initiatives here, we mean project, program, policy, or any major activity, right? That would be mean by an initiative. I wanted to write so four uh, outcomes. I'm linking here outcomes with the results matrix. So if you have your terms of reference, right? Uh, I think this is section 11. Now, there are three outcomes identified. Outcome one is increased fiscal PSIP expenditure. It is expected that if the board were to continue its operation after a period of one and a half year thereabout, there should be positive indication of our PSIP spend. Secondly, increased percentage of projects successfully completing the objective because this is a as of 2016 17 fiscal, it's relatively low, and also the ministry's strategic objective being achieved. So, there are two sets of uh, results matrix that was set up one is for reviewing the output, saying that currently the board takes four weeks to provide feedback, it is its intention that eventually go to one week so there'll be a one week turnaround time in the area of outcomes increased percentage of success uh, projects completing their respective projects as of 2016 17 less than 10 percent now what my less than 10 percent well a lot of projects actually don't come in on time i i don't view that i don't view that as a successful project there are a lot of projects that the deliverables the objectives are not achieved as planned so the intention here is that the project success in terms of timely completion and deliverables being completed as planned, um, that's the intention. And that, that can increase in the subsequent years. And lastly, increase fiscal PSIP expenditure. On average, over the past years, I think we have had a 60% spend. The intention is to consistently increase and to maintain that over the next few couple of years. Roles and responsibilities. So the project review board has a few roles. I wouldn't go through in, in, in detail, but I'll probably seek to highlight um, a few areas. I'll probably use a, a, the pen here just to highlight a few areas. So review and prioritize. That is the probably important ones, right? All the projects before the ministry commits resources. So the intention here is that provided advice and we're using the, the rubric to help ensure that there is consistency in our review, how we do our, our, our review. Um, exercise functional authority here refers to making recommendations for a project funding source to move from one project to another, or that actual physical resources and human resources move from one to another and making certain recommendations right in the event of should projects be uh, should projects not perform as they um, was originally intended ensuring that the ministry's tracked objectives and plans are enabled so projects operationalize strategic objectives and they are required so the project review board need to ensure that the Proposals are in alignment with the strategic objectives. So if there's not an alignment, then the board will score accordingly and probably not make a recommendation for such projects. 
Next, uh, consider all new project proposal with which include a business case and may request more details. So a project, so we said it may request more detail. A project proposal is the minimum requirement for submission for consideration for endorsement. Additional information could be required, right? Research data could be required. So don't view the proposal as being that is, 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 is all. More information can be required depending on the complexity of the project, depending on how much money or funds have been asked for of the project accordingly. Right? All right. Um, um, last, I'll probably look at two areas here again. One is recommend the suspension and closure of certain projects. So um, the Project Review Board could make recommendation that the a project be suspended, a project be terminated, um, that there is non-approval for a specific project um, right going forward. We say non-approval, meaning that the, the project could be closed. So it could be a project in train, but it could be a new project. Right? Such recommendations can be made. And those are just, just making a general comment about some of the res res roles and responsibilities of the Project Review Board. Authority, I, I indicated before that the board has a, a, a delegated responsibility, right? And that delegated responsibility here in this instance, we should know that the chair of the board may request assistance eh? um, or advice from experts. So the, the board can co-opt or can second other expertise to lend technical advice in an area of construction, HR, IT, whatever area that is seem deemed to be necessary accordingly. Membership. So the boards comprised um, membership wise, let me just remove my um my my pen block my arrow. Uh, so the boards comprise of the deputy permanent secretary, whoever he or she is in that chair, the director of strat services acts as the vice chair. Uh, money is involved, so we have finance and accounts. Legal services is there from a standpoint of you know, on primarily procurement and contractual related matters. Currently, as of March 2017, corporate services there as an observer, non-scoring member, and the manager of program management division. So this represents here the core, the team of the project review board. A role of the secretariat, so the secretariat uh, currently in that of the program management division, it seeks to maintain um, an accurate comprehensive portfolio of the projects. In other words, in short, the secretariat records the documentation, all documentation. It maintains communication between beneficiary and board and the permanent secretary. So it maintains the communication lines, it maintains all the documentation. It sets up the meeting, it provides feedback um, as a mechanism for providing feedback between, again, board and beneficiary and permanent secretary. Right? So that's the role of the secretariat. At the frequency, currently, in terms of reference, we are seeing monthly. However, a re uh, request has been made or consideration, I should say, have been put forward for frequency of the increases frequency, but more so to set statutory dates. For example, the first Monday or last Monday in a, in a given month. So that will be decided probably sometime subsequently. So let's kind of go back to where we were before. So we would have run through background, objectives, look at the outcomes. We look at three of them. There was one output, the the role of uh, responsibility of regard to the board, the level of authority. We said who are comprised the board in terms of the element of membership and the secretariat itself let's explain some of our some of the key documents that are used and three of them the rubric for scoring the uh, project proposal that is used as a primary input and then the assessment report which is the output um, from the board that goes out right of course let's look, let's look at these documents the rubric, and if you have your terms of reference, you would see there at some in the last page a, a more detailed description of the, the rubric. Uh, the first criterion, the call circular, um, rep mention is made here. The call circular provides direction in how 
projects ought to be prioritized. So at the top, for example, it would state things something like, if you had a project, there's already contractual obligation and it needs to continue to the next fiscal period, then that project is top priority. I might get the maximum score. Um, you may have a project where work has already started, not necessarily contractual obligated work, but other work may have started, and this is now to continue. So sometimes new projects get licks here, right? New, because a new project may not have started, this is really new, nothing may have gone prior. So sometimes new projects get relatively low score, and that's that's fine. I mean, they, are, they can make up their scores otherwise, all right? So you find that um, existing projects normally get a higher score. Alignment, is the project aligned to the strat objectives of the ministry? I'm um, supposed to be MPAC, not MPA. Um, so this alignment, we you, you look at your strategic objectives and you ask questions. Again, we said we don't build, we don't build bridges and, and, and stuff like that. So roads and paved roads and whatever. So we have to ensure that whatever resources in terms of people, time, effort, fund that goes into a project is in alignment with the ministry attaining its, its objectives. So this is the important. So we look at alignment part here. Um, if you look at your rubric also, you would note that in the, in the project proposal document, there are certain sections we would l look at. And as I say, we mean the project review board. So the board will look at certain sections to ascertain where the first criterion is concerned. Or it may look at for the strategic objectives uh, for alignment, it may look at the area of project description and probably project goals and objective. Those might be the two sections it will look at. For like clear objectives and results, it may look at the results matrix and your outcomes. So for every criterion listed here, all right, for the list of criteria we have here for each, the there is specific sections in the proposal that the board would, would look at in order to assess um, what what score should be put here, how much have they satisfied this particular criterion. Service delivery, how much value will the outcome of the project bring to customers? Um, for our ministry, a lot of our customers are other ministries. For agencies, um, they may deal with the public directly, such as the um, NALIS. Um, resource availability. So resource availability here are key resources available. So we are asking, and the, the context here is painted, we ask questions such as, what projects are you currently undertaking? How many resources from your division are currently assigned to those existing projects? For this new project, how many resources are you going to assign? And probably you may even want to know what is the, you know, the level of commitment required. You need them full-time, you need them part-time, and that will help to assess. Because where you have few resources already stretched, and you want to have more projects, and these projects require more resources, it adds, to, uh, it increases the risk, right? it increases the risk of, of, of project failure or putting a strain on the project, or, or if not failure, but the project not being able to achieve all of its objectives. So this rubric is used to help again ensure a degree of consistency in how projects are actually reviewed and quote-unquote marked accordingly. The project proposal, so another video will be used to um, highlight and indicate, uh, describe the project proposal document. So these are all the various sections in the project proposal. The project proposal document is it's a, it's a, it's a hybrid document. Um, Puss may ask about the difference between this and a charter or a brief. So it, it is it is full, It is I would say not as lean as a charter, it may not be as comprehensive and broad-based as a business case. So in some organizations, the first thing you may have to have is a position paper, followed by a business case, then a proposal of a charter. In our case, the project proposal will suffice. It suffices because it's comprehensive enough to at least provide as the minimum requirement for project consideration. Minimum requirement for project consideration. More may be required, but not less. And this, anyone who is working on any project um, should be able to complete these various sections appropriately so that you know, you know what your project is about and what your project is supposed to be delivering. All right? So that's your project proposal. We're not, really going to, we're not going to go through all the details of the project proposal in this presentation. 
Lastly is the Project Review Board Assessment Report. So the report states whether a project is endorsed. It goes forward to the Permanent Secretary for approval. Or the project is endorsed with reservations. That is, there may be certain things asked for the beneficiary to, to, to address still. Um, but it doesn't hold back it from being endorsed. It's not endorsed. Or the project may not have adequate information. That is, the proposal may not have adequate information to make a determination. And so it is returned for it to be addressed and then come back to the board again. In the report, the, the score mechanism is provided and the person will see what score they would have gotten. And then there are observations, comments and recommendations. So the comments and observation is based upon what was would have been gleaned from the proposal document and the recommended action is saying these are the things that need to be done in order to improve the proposal or for it to come back um, for consideration for endorsement by the project review board. So if you were to give this a score, um, what score would you ascribe to this? This, is, this here covers the area of resources. You know, um, it, it covers section 14, 17, and 19 of the project proposal document. So if you say here, let's, move, let's see what we have here. So the project will be conducted in, a, in the main by consultant. All right, so our external parties hand any project. Uh, three resources from the division will be assigned fine and they said here there's a high risk as one is that internally it is a hr risk as one internal resource will proceed on enough contract leave and within the next two months and another resource is on month to month short-term employment so this means then that you're already strapped your hr is strapped for resources on top of that there are two existing projects and of these two existing projects three persons are already committed so with something like a project like this, um, if one has to probably give it a score out of 20, um, I can probably see it someone probably easily giving this probably a score less than 5. Right? Less than 5. And this may, may reflect a reality on some projects. As a result, the recommendation is made that a risk assessment be done and attached to a project proposal if it is that there's high HR risk, good project, or the project could be a, a compliance where we must do it. It could be a ministerial instruction or executive instruction. Um, but if it is that there's high HR risk, then it, a recommendation is that a, a, a risk assessment be, be conducted so as to help how could that risk be mitigated. Um, if you have to give this a score, um, section 20, uh, where we have uh, as as an outcome um, ABC division is more productive the KPI is the percent vacancy um, and stuff the, the challenge here of this example we have a f probably a few challenges well, one is that we're making the assumption that vacancy um, implies if you have reduced vacancy, it means increased productivity. Uh, not necessarily, right? Because over the years, the intention is to reduce your vacancy. Um, secondly, more productive here is sort of nebulous. Uh, that that is, what does that mean? More productive in IT is different from more productive in HR. More different, more productive in some other division, and so it. The, the outcome in itself is challenged, right? So there's a challenge in terms of the outcome by it being difficult to measure and even understand. The KPI being selected is even questionable. Um, the other case, customers are happier. That can be an impact. An outcome should refer to an immediate benefit. Uh, customers happier might happen probably uh, at three tiers down the road. So you may have an immediate benefit interim benefit and an impact probably down the road customers are happier but that would not be an immediate and so therefore what would be the immediate benefit so immediate benefit if our customers are happier doesn't necessarily cut it right? so let's do a review so background paint the context of governance of the need there is a call circular where we are called to be compliant there's a strategic plan where we are seeking to action or to implement. 
Um, we have um, other areas of fiscal constraint that we are working with and that there are some projects hopping, right? And they are in need of help. So there's a need to have a mechanism in place in order to help to increase project success, help increase spend, and more so help provide the value to our customers as we ought to. Responsibility of the stakeholders, we, we went through that. We saw from the beneficiary, the Project Review Board Secretariat, in that of the Program Management Division, Project Review Board itself, and the Permanent Secretary. Then we look at the responsibilities of the Project Review Board. We kind of ran, ran through the terms of reference and then explain a couple of key documents in terms of the rubric, the project proposal, and the assessment report. So this is our wrap up. I hope this uh, would be informative to you and would aid the Ministry of Public Administration and Communication uh, in increasing its project management maturity level as well as project success. So with that, we come to an end. Uh, you do enjoy your project.